CD47 is a major negative macrophage immune checkpoint. And so basically this provides a, a do not eat me signal from cancer cells to the macrophage, basically to say, do not eat me. And in AML and MDS, you know, high expression has actually been previously associated with inferior overall survival. And so to target this, um, agrolimab, or formerly uh, known as 5F9, is a first-in-class IgG4 inhibitor of CD47. So it basically uh, inhibits the interaction of CD47 on the macrophages with, uh, I mean, CD47 on the tumor cells with serp alpha on the macrophages. And this really allows for selective elimination of the cancer cells. What's nice is really only cancer cells express the pro e signals, whereas most of our normal cells do not. So you really only get phagocytosis of, of cancer cells and not, not normal cells. There's one exception, which are old red blood cells. This is our body's normal way to clear. Uh, and so this is sort of an on-target anemia side effect that we expect uh, based on the mechanism of action. And so the trial that I present at ASCO is a combination of azacitidine, which is a standard drug for higher risk myelodysplastic syndrome, as well as uh, elderly or unfit patients uh, with acute myeloid leukemia. In combination with megrolimab, we had preclinical synergy data showing that the combination was superior better than either agent alone. Um, and so the megrolimab, the way it's dosed, there's a priming dose where you get one milligram per kilo the first week. This is to mitigate the on-target anemia that we see, and then uh, is ramped up to full dose over two weeks. And then starting actually with cycle three, the megrolimab is dosed every other week. The azacitidine is standard at a 75 milligram per meter uh, schedule, uh, days one to seven on a 28-day schedule. Um, so the data that I present on, there were 39 uh, higher risk MDS patients and 29 AML patients, median age of 70 and 74 years of age respectively, a lot of very high risk features. And then particularly in the AML cohort, uh, based on some early efficacy, uh, we actually amended the cohort to only enroll P53 mutant AML patients. And so 45% of the 29 AML patients were, were P53 mutant. Um, as far as toxicity, is it very well tolerated, um, no maximum tolerated dose achieved, really no significant worsening of the side effects that we expect with azacitidine, with the exception that we can see worsening anemia, particularly in cycle one. Um, but again, we mitigate this with the priming strategy, and most patients significantly improve uh, their, their hemoglobin and other accounts uh, actually you know, quite rapidly. Um, we've only had uh, one patient out of everybody dosed to date who was discontinued for in, an adverse event. Um, as far as the efficacy results, we had a 91% overall response rate in high-risk MDS and a 64% uh, composite CRCRI rate in AML. Uh, importantly, if we look at MDS patients, almost all patients had some level of hematologic improvement with only four patients only having blast clearance. Uh, importantly, we do see responses deepen over time, actually a 56% complete remission rate for patients that have, a, have been on therapy for at least six months. And so we actually expect the CR rate may you know, further improve uh, over time. And these responses are quite rapid with a median time of 1.9 months. Um, we see other good metrics such as a uh, high percentage of transfusion independence in, in almost two-thirds of patients. Um, and then we do uh, uh, MRD by multiparameter flow cytometry, and half of the AML patients achieve this and 20% of the MDS patients. And one of the most notable findings overall is that these responses have been very durable. And so with a median follow-up between six to nine months, depending on the cohort, uh, we have not met a median duration of response, and we've not met a median overall survival. And then just a quick focus on P53 mutant AML. Remember, we amended the study based on some early efficacy. And this group, again, historically does very poor, even to novel agents such as hypomethylating agents with venetoclax. We had 12 P53 mutant AML patients, 75% who had a response, um, and these were all CRCRI responses. Uh, and half of patients um, had a complete cytogenetic response with, a, uh, uh, with the, basically the same percentage having MRD negativity. And again, these responses in a very poor risk group have been durable with no median duration of response or overall uh, survival being met as of yet. Um, and so really just in conclusion, you know, this, this drug has uh, been very safe in combination with azacitidine with very high response rates, both in MDS, AML, and particularly a high-risk P53 mutant AML uh, subset. Um, these responses are deepening over time. And based on everything, um, we are expanding, currently expanding uh, 
the cohorts in both MDS and AML patients, and there's a registrational study in progress in MDS that is starting up and a planned one for P53 AML. Hopefully, will really change the landscape, particularly for, for higher risk MDS patients.